Now, here's a big one on time management. When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Don't work and play. I used to take my family to the beach and I would bring my briefcase. I learned not to do that. Or at the beach, I'm saying I should be at the office. I should be at the office. Now my family's upset because I'm at the beach and I'm thinking office, office, office. Now when I'm at the office, I'm thinking what? I got to get my family to the beach, the beach, the beach. So things are not going too well at the office because I'm thinking beach and things are not going too well at the beach because I'm thinking office. Here's what I learned to do. At the beach, be at the beach. At the office, be at the office. When you work, work. When you play, play. Don't mix the two. Don't work at play. Now here's one of the most important ones. Don't play at work. Work is too serious. You don't want the reputation of being the office joker. It's not a good one. Yes, there's time for some pleasant stories. Yes, there's time for a little humor. Yes, uh, best if it's a happy office, of course. But I'm telling you, you got to be serious about work because you're parting with a piece of your life for the work you do. Your work costs you a piece of your life. Here's what it's called. Serious business, not grim, not unhappy, but serious. Keep. Don't play at work. The old expression, I don't think we use it anymore, horse around at the office. Play around, play jokes, play tricks. No place, not at the workplace. At the beach, yes. At the bar, yes. Somewhere else, not work. You've got to treat work with all due conservative passion. Because it's leading you to your future. Here's another key phrase, all work is good. You may not like your job, but if it's the stepping stones to get you to where you want to, to go, you've got to appreciate your job. You don't have to have a passion for your job. Here's the ultimate passion, a passion for incredible success in every department of my life. That's the passion. But don't look down on some menial job you have to do to finally get you to where you want to go. No job is menial, menial. No job is not, no, every job is noble. Training life for pay, making a contribution to society. Next, analyze how you are. And if you have some weaknesses, if you can't, doesn't seem like you can change. Here's the key. Get it covered. I used to keep promising myself I'd keep the books, keep the books, keep the books. Finally, I gave that up. And back then, it only took me an extra 50, 60 bucks a month for some accountant to keep the books. I said, no, I'm going to save the 50 bucks. You can't believe what I started losing in productivity because I tried to save the 50 bucks. So the key is a lot of the time you can stay like you are, but just make sure you get it covered. Next, beware of the telephone and all other systems of communication, especially the telephone at home and systems of communication at home. And here's one of the best lines I've got for you for the weekend. Let all communication systems serve you, but don't let them intrude. When it comes time to have dinner with your family, you shut off all systems unless the ones that can take messages silently. Don't let the phone ring. Don't let anybody intrude, come through the front door nor the back door, nor through the telephone or any other device. So you can't reach John and his family when he's having dinner. The President of the United States couldn't get through. If you develop that kind of a reputation, father, mother, when we have dinner, when we're visiting and have this time with our family, nothing intrudes. So don't let these clever little devices keep intruding. You've got to have a place that's sacrosanct. It's, it's valuable. You don't let anything in for that period of time. Okay. Isn't that good advice? Excellent advice. Here's the next one. Read all the books. You know, I've only got a few notes here on time management, but if you've got some particular challenges, you run a big organization, a big corporation, you've got some challenges, there's plenty of books. Now, here's what's next. Just be more alert.
to the things that might be stealing your time. Here's why. Time is like capital. You can't let someone steal your seed corn. You can't let someone steal your capital. And you can't let someone steal your time. You must designate your time. And some of the time that you designate, you must not let anyone steal. Casual time, you might let someone intrude and steal a little bit and take a little bit, but not serious time. Next, one of the great time management savers is to learn to ask questions up front. Sometimes you talk to somebody for an hour, and then you ask questions and find out if you would have asked those questions up front, you could have saved yourself an hour. Asking questions up front helps you to get to the problem now. But if you just launch into some discourse, you might waste 30 minutes, waste an hour, when here's what you should have been talking about. After you finished an hour, you say, John, what's really the problem? He said, well, it's something personal. See, that's what you should have been talking about this whole hour. 